I'm sure all of you know the ESP explorers that James Hetfield uses, at least the Gibson shaped ones. But you rarely see this one, or at least you see the E2 or LTD versions. This one is a bit different. It is the Sharper Explorer. The 2000 ESP EX with the bolt-on neck construction. I haven't seen a single video review of this particular model. I've seen a couple of video demonstrations of the newer models from 2008-2010 with the neck through body construction, but this one, you're gonna see it now. <laughs> Here's the official catalog from ESP for the 25th anniversary, the year 2000. Let's take a look. At the 5th page, we see the EX series V250 by LTD. Of course, there are some differences in the craftsmanship materials used, Ooh, ESP truss rod cover, 12th fret inlay with the model number. The official specs are pretty similar to the ESP. We got a bolt-on neck construction, mahogany body, maple neck, 22 extra jumbo frets, but we have two. Duncan Design Pickups. Flipping the catalog to page 16, we find the ESP standard models and particularly the EX. No ESP truss rod cover, no 12 fret inlay, but it's a full blown standard ESP. And remember, the LTD had the Duncan Design Pickups, this one has the EMG8181. Or a headset in my case, but a bolt on neck construction, mahogany body, maple neck, 22 extra jumbo frets, pneumatic bridge, black finish. It is as black as a metalhead saw with a blacked out hardware and really high gloss finish. As you can see the body shape is pretty distinctive and it differs a lot from the traditional explorers that are you used to seeing by Gibson, by ESP that James uses. This one is a bit sharper. The body is a bit smaller too which makes it extremely comfortable. The main reason that you're not seeing this shape, the EX, as often as the other one, the Gibson shape, is that not a lot of artists use this one. As soon as you see it in a Metallica video, you will lose your mind and start looking for one on reverb. It is just as high quality instrument as any ESP standard, especially from the year 2000. The quality was superb back then. The owner had replaced the EMG81 pickups with a set of James Hetfield EMG signature pickups and they are screaming pretty nice in this particular guitar. The fingerboard is a little bit wider, combined with the 22 extra jumbo frets make this guitar comfortable for a lot of people with big hands. The neck is on the chunky side like on the 58 Gibson Explorer. So it takes a little bit of getting used to for people like me that played the thin C shapes of the Les Paul Customs. Or for example compared to the ESP Eclipse standard necks, they are definitely thinner than this. And yeah, it is a bolt on with a maple neck. It is definitely a unique guitar and I don't think it's for everybody. However, if you like the body shape, if you prefer a little bit wider and thicker necks, you don't mind the bolt on neck construction because honestly I'm not hearing any difference. What I'm hearing is that the James Hetfield set never sounded better. In fact, this is the first time that I'm liking the James Hetfield set more in anything other than my ESP Custom Shop Iron Cross. Oh boy, this one hasn't been played for over a year. There's some rust, the frets need some polishing. I'm gonna definitely shine it and put new strings on it. Let's go through the specs again. We got the EX body shape, mahogany body, two pieces probably, a maple neck with a bolt on neck construction, rosewood fingerboard, 22 extra jumbo frets, Goto made in Japan tuners, the block ESP logo, black hardware, EMG James Hetfield replacement pickups. Originally it came with EMG8181, Goto bridge and a tailpiece. Business as usual for ESP, the routing is immaculate, shooting paint under the pickups. Quick connect flux for the pickups, some buffing compound here in the neck and the bridge, more of the same with a perfect routing. 
As I already mentioned, the original 8181 pickups were replaced with the EMG James Hetfield set. I think my friend bought this guitar around 2014, so the pickups are made in 2012. And this one is the bridge, same 2012. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this might be a set from one of his ESP Snakebite Hetfield guitars. Remember, when you're plugging back the EMG pickups, those three pins should be facing down. We got a flat top with slanted pickup rings, two short screws for the front portion of the neck pickup ring and long for the rest. One of them is considerably rusted out from some sweat, I'm gonna clean it up as well as the bridge. I'm pretty familiar with the EMG headset, the bridge position is at 1760k ohms, switching over to the neck, 1762, similar, middle position, 1361, so these are hot as expected for a set of active EMGs. The bridge situation is similar to the ESP Edwards uh, Eclipse that I've recently reviewed. It's a tunematic made in Japan by Goto, but the inserts in the body are like on an ABR1 bridge with thin struts. It's a bit weird for me on a modern guitar like this, but at least it's not throwing it off like on the Eclipse. The tailpiece is also by Goto. To give you an idea how sharp the EX is, here it is compared to the Extura and the Brendan Small Signature who share the same body. The EX has a slightly smaller body with much sharper edges and better high fret axis. Something cool that you don't see on the photos, the edges of the body and especially here near the top horn had been cut away for added comfort. Also on the lower horn there's a nice high fret axis cut away. And one of the features that makes this EX different from the other explorers that you've seen, a bolt on neck construction with a maple neck and rosewood fingerboard. It is a big chunk of a rosewood on top of that maple neck with perloid side dots and these really high extra jumbo 22 frets. In this particular ESP I like them, they're comfy. Perloid dot inlays, the nut I think it had been replaced because it's narrower than the channel for it as you can see. This is the sharper headstock unlike the hockey stick one that you've seen in the 80s and 90s. This one you can see it on the ESP horizon, it has the ESP block letters the black goto tuners and this white cavity for the truss rod which is one way adjustable traditional like on the gibsons. Here's another look at that gorgeous rosewood fingerboard, a pretty nice piece was used. I always like to inspect the perloid inlays for consistency, these are ok. And check this out, a 23 year old guitar but the truss rod cover still has the protective film on it. So my senses were not lying to me, this is definitely a wider neck at almost 44mm or 1.72 inch. Back to normal at the 12th fret, 53mm or 2.08 inches. Thickness at the 1st fret, really thick at 22.4 or 0.88, but remember it has a volute, so if you measure a little bit after it, thinner, 21.5. Still, it is a bit on the chunky side at 23mm, not as chunky as a Gibson Les Paul standard, but keep in mind. It's a bit chunky. The body thickness is similar to the Eclipse at almost 40mm or 1.56 inch. The distance between the pickup rings 56.7mm. The distance from the middle of the pole of the pickup to the middle of the strut of the bridge 38mm. A comfy 305 or 12 inch radius for the fingerboard. A nicely rounded off C shape near the 1st fret, getting a little bit flatter near the 12th, some more meat on it. Feels similar to the Epiphone 58 Explorer that I reviewed, but it has a volute on it. Back of the guitar reveals a line separating the body in two pieces, at least two pieces of mahogany. I was expecting more like on Epiphone Explorers or LTDs, like they use at least four or five pieces, but this seems like two big chunks of mahogany. Here's what the electronics compartment looks like, perfectly routed with shielding paint in it, the electronics for the EMG pickups and this is an early year so it doesn't have the quick connect for the pots as well, has the ground wire and these old small pots for the EMG with a capacitor, perfectly routed for the pickups. Here's another look at that cavity, it's perfection always with ESP and Edwards. Also the edges of the body are slightly sloped as on the front for added comfort. Here's the output jack, shutter replacement strap buttons here and one here, pretty well balanced and a good high fret axis cut away. The cover for the electronics compartment still has the protective film and shooting on the backside. Late 90s and early 2000s have the serial number not on the back of the headstock but here on the bolt on plate 
41212, pretty cool number, ESP logo, blacked out plate. A small high threat access cutaway which is pretty useful because this is the exact spot where your palm would be resting if you're playing on the high frets. Yeah, that feels comfy. The back of that maple neck is finished in black gloss. I don't see any seam lines so I'm guessing one piece of maple at least here near the volute. I can't be absolutely sure but I'm guessing one piece and the volute is always comfortable for me. I love these things. Even though it says ESP custom guitars, this is not made in the custom shop. This is ESP standard. Black go to tuners to go with the rest of the blacked out hardware. Made in Japan, barely visible. I'm gonna set this one in E standard and I was meaning to experiment with the string joy signatures particularly the 1048 balanced light set. They are supposed to have better balance tension wise across all 6 strings. The difference in the gauge, we have 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, 46 for the regular, then we have 10, 13 and a half, 17, 26, 36, 48. If you run the gauges through a tension calculator, you see that the string joy has better balance for bends across 6 strings. The string joys have a pretty cool box with a lot of information on and in it, play your way. This seems like a handwritten signature actually. And it might be because these are wound by hand in the USA. Easy does it. Be careful, strings have a mind of their own when uncoiling. Be smart, be safe and don't hurt yourself. Don't tell me how to live my life, string joy. I like to live dangerously. I am the danger. The high string got me. <laughs> That's the original hard shell case, white stitching, the ESP logo, 3 latches and it's not big and obnoxious like most Explorer cases by Gibson with the 4 latches, this one fits in the back seat of a hatchback. The interior of the case is pretty rough to the touch, it's not that soft material you see on Gibson cases, some padding for the bolt-on neck construction and it has been cut specifically for that body shape, you cannot fit a regular Explorer in here. A compartment for accessories with some velcro. And here is the truss rod adjustment tool. Pretty neat to have a case specifically made for this guitar. It weighs as much as an Eclipse or a Gibson HG for example at 741 pounds. Time for a tone demo.
I have some mixed feelings. At first I didn't like the body shape, the fact that it's a bolt on neck construction, the action was too high, but as soon as I've replaced the strings and set the action, I had the chance to hear the headset through my VH4 diesel amp. I like this guitar now. I even don't mind the chunky neck, it feels comfortable once you get used to it. The quality is superb as expected from an ESP from the early 2000s. It is in good shape, the playability is superb, the high fret axis is great, it's light, it's a made in Japan ESP. A lot of people are thrown off by the bolt on neck construction but honestly I couldn't feel the difference in the sound and the playability. It's great, in fact I think that it's one music video away, for example from Metallica. If you see James Hetfield playing one of these, you're gonna lose your mind and you're gonna want one. By the way, here's my personal opinion about the explorers from the 90s and late 80s that James is using. They're extremely overpriced these days. Like they go for almost $10,000 now. And I know they're good, but they don't feel like $10,000 to me. So if you like the body shape of the EX, if you like the chunky bolt on neck, and you don't want to spend a ton of money and you can find one, this is your explorer.